My area of expertise is in the comparative and international politics of genetics and biotechnology. And in 2007, I published a book entitled Building Genetic Medicine, which compares the development of genetic testing for breast cancer in the US and Britain. In 2007, the ACLU contacted me because of my work on this issue, and they were trying to get together, figure out who might be the appropriate plaintiffs in, uh, if they were to launch a lawsuit. And so we spoke about who might make good uh, plaintiffs. And then a couple of years later, when then they were ready to launch the lawsuit and starting to figure out how to do the argumentation, they also asked me to submit a declaration in the case. And the declaration was about 30 pages in length, and it basically summarized the findings of the book, particularly vis-a-vis -vis Myriad, that is, focusing on the process of scientific discovery, the development of testing services, and Myriad's use of its intellectual property position. In terms of the broader implications of this case, there, there are three, I would say. The first is whether or not patents are good for innovation and in what circumstances patents are good for innovation. This is a case in which I think it can be pretty clearly argued that patents weren't really great for the innovation process. But how should we think about this from a policy perspective? Should we, where should we draw the line? The second is how should we think about the broader implications of patents in terms of the costs of healthcare. Again, in this case, it seems pretty clear that existence of a patent increased the costs of healthcare. But you know, many people argue that if you're going to think about the medical or health implications, you should talk about the fact that innovations are available to the public at all because of patents. But what does it mean if the costs of that are really, really high? prices. So that starts to raise the question about what are the kinds of things that we should be thinking about when we think about patent law. Should it be more than just economic competitiveness and narrow ideas about what it takes to stimulate innovation? Should it be broader questions about the health implications, the moral implications of commodifying life, and the scientific implications of uh, how patents might change the culture of science. Those are the kinds of things that I think we're about to start a national discussion about, and I'm really excited to see where that national conversation of goes, regardless of what happens uh, in terms of the outcome of this particular case.